put it in this section. So we will try to get to know how to get access to the online databases. Either true. There's a. I'm listening. Who was calling? Can we continue? Yes, sir. Yes. So we are trying to get access to the online databases. Seyman. Seyman, yes, well. please. Yes. I think I personally have a problem with your voice. Is that because so? your voice is too far. Hold on. Hold on, I'm coming. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Is it still too far? For me now, it's somehow clear. Somehow. Yes, please. Let me change my settings. Hmm. Yeah, hold on, I'm coming. Let me change my side. Okay, sir. Oh, can you still hear me? Yeah, no, I can hear you, sir. It's not far? No, please. Okay. So I was saying we are trying to get access to the online databases, either by using the off-campus access or using the on campus access. I hope you can still hear me. Yes, please. Okay, so first of all, you open your browser. First of all, you open your browser, then you try your possible best to go online to the school's website. You open your browser, be it Google Chrome, Safari, edge any browser you are using try your possible best to go onto the central university website by typing central.edu.gh click on enter you wait for a while till the page loads for you After the page has loaded, if you are using a mobile phone, you are going to see three lines. Click on the three lines. But if you are using a laptop, you are going to have a view like this. So, Let's imagine we are using a laptop. You try your possible best to locate the library tab. Once you locate the library tab, you hover your mouse on it. Once your mouse is hovered on it, a drop down menu pops up. If you are using a mobile phone, you click on the three lines. Once you click on the three lines, 
a page or a menu will appear. Once the menu appear, you will see home, about CU, school, international admission, chaplaincy, research, publications, library. Once you see library, there is an arrow beside library. Click on the arrow. That is if you are using a mobile phone. If you are using a laptop, you hover your mouse on the library tab, a drop down will come. Then kindly locate e services. Kindly locate e services and click on it. Kindly locate e services and click on it. Kindly locate e services and click on it. Once you click on e services, the page opens for you. Yeah. Once you click on e-services, this page opens for you. Kindly mute your mics. Unless you are called up to talk, please. Now, once you click on e-services, this page appears for you. Once you click on e-services, this page appears for you. You will see our electronic services. Some of our electronic services are off-campus access to online databases, institutional repository, library catalog, ebook services, e-thesis repository, past questions, and the rest. Now, there are two ways of assessing the... Cynthia, your hands is up. Yeah, please, we can see your screen. Alberta, can you see my screen? Beatrice, can you see my screen? Daniela, can you see my screen? Yes, please. Francisca. Favor, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Faith, can you see my screen? Faith, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Cynthia, if possible, can you refresh your page? Cynthia? Yes. Can you refresh your page? Because I can see myself, I can see my screen on my second monitor i'm monitoring it right now okay. you, can okay. screen, and you need to refresh your browser or position yourself well so that you can get your bandwidth okay sir thank you sir you're welcome but i'm recording it though so i'll send a recorded video to you so uh, when you click on e-services you will see the e-electronic services product we have now in case you are using the school's wi-fi and you want to get access to the databases you just have to scroll down when you find yourself on the e-services page you scroll down when you scroll down, you will see the databases the school has subscribed to. When you scroll down, you will see the databases the school has subscribed to. Now, we use, the, we use this approach when you are connected to the school's Wi-Fi. With that, you can select the database you want to use and just click 
on the link. But in case you are in your comfort zone, that is you are in the house and you are using your own data, then it's advisable not to use the on-campus access, but use off-campus access. Now, how do we use the off-campus access? Once you are on the e-service page, once you are on the e-service page, the first thing you will see is off-campus access to online databases. You click on that link, off-campus access to online databases. You click on that link of campus access to online databases. You click on that link. Of campus access to online databases. You click on that link. I hope we are all following. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Hello, sir. Yeah, yes, but please. on my screen, uh, what do we advance and go back? Okay, so Hello. have you clicked on off campus access? Yes, please, sir. I've not clicked on it yet. Mm -hmm. Beatrice, you want to say something? Yes, please. I just clicked on mine. And what came was this connection is private. Yes, please. Okay, That's so what I had. So please, you said. On. I've not clicked on it. That's I've what I had. On it. We've not got into that stage. Uh, Oko, please. Your hands is up. Yes, sir. So um, I'm using the school's Wi-Fi and I'll be able to access it already. It's saying Project Muse. Yeah. Okay, so you can see Project Muse. Yeah. So you clicked on Project Muse. Yes, I did. Okay, so hold on. Okay. So who else? Cynthia, your hands is up. Cynthia, your hands is up. Sir, please, it's okay. Thank you. Are you sure? Cynthia, are you sure? Yes, sir. Please, it's all about my screen. Uh, it looks like it has frozen. It's at one place, but I think yes, it's so only just, so. just tap on it. Tap on the screen. Tap on the screen as if you are leaving the page it, to come back to the current position. Okay? okay? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, as we are all on the page, where you've written off campus access to online databases, you click on off campus access to online databases. Now, for the past one week, uh, since we went for Easter break, uh, there have been one or two issues. Now, the issue is something we call SSL. SSL is used to secure your website, okay? Now, uh, our SSL expired this month. That is the week to Easter, or the week during Easter. That's when the SSL expired. And uh, you have to wait for the SSL certificate to expire before you can upload a new one, okay? SSL makes sure that your transaction online is secure. So with SSL, you are going to see HTTPS. The S, what that means, secure. It means that an SSL certificate has 
have been installed on that uh, website. So our SSL has expired and we have created a new SSL, which should be installed hopefully by tomorrow. So hopefully we are working on it. I'm working on it with the IT team. Hopefully from tomorrow going, you won't be seeing uh, advance and all those things you are seeing. But nevertheless, let me teach you what to do. So when you click on the off campus access to online databases, how again? Can I continue? Yes, sir. So when you click on the off campus access to online databases. You are going to see something like this. Can you see my screen? Yes, Can you see my screen? So if you check at the top where the not secure has been written, you see that the HTTPS has been canceled, right? Yes, please. Yes. So it means that our SSL has expired. It expired just last week during the Easter festivity. So I have I have communicated with IT. They have created a new SSL. They'll give it to me tonight, tomorrow morning. I just install it. Then everything comes back to normal again. But for the meantime, you just have to click on advance. Okay, you click on advanced. When you click on advanced, so many English terminology will come. The server could not prove that. Then, 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 then. Kindly scroll down. You see, proceed to off campus .central .g is into bracket on TIFF. Just click on it. You see, they've written that the server, the SSL is five, five days ago. Can you all see the security certificate expired five days ago? So it's so we should click on what, please? Hello, sir. On. First click Hello, on sir. advanced. First click on advanced. Advanced, okay. Then those terminologies will come. Reading, reading, just scroll down. You sir, please, you can hear. Sir, you are, you are, what, your voice him? is a big challenge. I think, sir, sir I think you should volume up small. Just volume up. I should do what? Volume up your voice more. Sir, please, we can't hear you. Okay, hold on, I'm coming. Hold on, I'm coming. Can you hear me? 
Yes. 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 So you still cannot hear. We cannot mm. hear. We, we can hear somehow. Let's continue. Somehow. Yes, please. I think you, your voice, you, you lower your voice to, uh, somehow. So you can even do something for it so that we can hear you well. Oh? Hmm. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's <laughs> continue. <laughs> <laughs> are you using an earpiece? Derek, no, sir. Can you get an earpiece? Hey. But my earpiece has fall. Okay. So, but you can hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. So, I was saying that when you come to the e-services website, when you come to the e-services website, you click okay. on the off-campus access to online databases. You click on off-campus access to online databases. We do that because we are using our own data. But if you are on campus and you are connected to the school's Wi-Fi or you are connected to the school's LAN port, meaning that you are on the IP of the school. Then you can scroll down and use any of the database beneath there. But if you are using your own data, then kindly use the off-campus access to the online databases approach. How do we do that? You click on off-campus access to online databases. Then the page opens up for you. Now, for the past five days, our SSL certificate has expired. That was during the Easter break. We have created a new one. We will install it by tomorrow. So when you click on off-campus access to online database from tomorrow going, this page is what you will see. But for today, you are going to see the error message. Once you see the error message, kindly scroll down. You are going to see two buttons. Advance, back. Kindly click on advance. When you click on advance, so many write-ups will appear. You can decide to read the write-up. But scroll down till you see proceed to then the name of the website is there. Then into brackets, you are going to see on save, but kindly click on it. From tomorrow onwards, you won't see that page again. Now, when everything goes on successful, you are supposed to see this page. That is the off-campus access to the online database page. Now, in case you have already registered, because last week I met you, I did this thing for you to see. I told you to register. And my colleague at Christ Temple, my colleague at Christ Temple will see the message and will put your information on the server and will send you an email so you can get access. Now, how do we register? When you scroll upwards, when you try to read the instruction, you will see click here for off-campus registration form. You only click on it if you don't have a username and a password. But if you already have a username and a password, you don't need to re-register. So you click on it. Once you click on it, this form will appear for you to see. The form is asking for your surname, your other name, your status, your email, 
your student ID. Please, your student ID should be in capital letters and make sure you bring the slashes. Please, your student ID should be in capital letters and make sure you bring the slashes. Then you provide your phone number, the program you are offering, the level you are in, the campus you belong to, the section, and click on submit. Hello, sir. Maximum. Yes, Hello, please. sir. Everything, yes, the username, everything should be in capital letter. Yes, you can decide to make everything in capital letter. Okay, sir. But most especially, what we want is your ID. Because at the end of the day, your username will be your ID. And when we are putting your ID on the server, we use capital letters. So if you provide small letters to us, we will change it to capital letters. So when you try to log in and you try logging in with small letters, it won't open. If you try logging in with your email, it won't open. If you try logging in, in with your mobile number, it won't open apart from your ID in the right format. The format is capital letters, your slashes. For example, if you are offering accounting, capital A, capital C, capital T, slash, two, two, slash, zero, one, slash, one, zero, 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 one. That is my ID. I hope you understand. So once you get that email, your username and your password will be in the email. Once you get that, you come to the off-campus access to online database page. You scroll down to where they've written, enter username and password. You enter your username. So for the purpose of this practical section, my username is my mobile number. My password is small letters P A S S W O R D. Then you click on login. Once you log in, this page opens up for you. Now, you decide on which database you want to use and Hello. You it. Hello. Login. Hello, sir. Yes, please. please we, uh, some of us, we are now, or other ones did not come, so we are now writing everything to sign it. So you are a bit speeding for us. If you can slow for us to keep up with you. I'll provide, I'm recording this video. I'll provide it for you to view and practice it at your own pace. Okay. Please let me. Yes, sir. Yes, please. So the database pops up. You based on the information you are looking for, or based on the article you are looking for, and based on the discipline that is the course you are offering, you choose one of the databases and you apply or you use. So that for the purposes of by practicals, I decide to choose JSTOR. So I click on JSTOR. Now, when I click on JSTOR, the page for JSTOR opens up. Now, before you begin any search, there are certain theoretical experts you need to know. Now, every search engine uses certain operators. Those operators are called Boolean operators. They are basically three types of Boolean operators. We have the end operator, the or operator, the not operator. By default, every search engine uses the end Boolean operator. By default, every search engine uses the end Boolean operator. Now, what does the end Boolean operator do? 
the end boolean operator makes sure that all the keywords have entered into the system are present in the document before the document will be retrieved and displayed on your screen. For example, if you have a research topic like the effects of drug abuse among teenagers in Kaswa, this is my research topic. I need to break my research topic down into keywords. So I can say effects, drug abuse, teenagers, Kaswa. So if I enter these keywords into the search box or search boxes, by default, the search boxes will use the end boolean operator. Once it is using the end boolean operator, there are certain things called spiders or robots. These spiders or robots will pick up the keywords I have entered, go deep down into the databases to which the search engine is connected to, and do what we call matching. That is, it is matching the keywords you have entered with the keywords that has been indexed into the databases. It matches the keywords to see whether it is similar to that which has been stored in the database. Once it is similar, it retrieves the document for you. But the end Boolean operator makes sure that all the keywords you have entered must be present in the document before that particular document will be retrieved and displayed for you. Now, the all Boolean operator makes sure that at least one keyword is present in the document before it will be retrieved for you. Therefore, the end Boolean operator gives you fewer results and the all Boolean operator gives you more results. As for the not Boolean operator, it gives you one-sided information. That is, if you say mango, not orange, the information that will pop up will contain only information on mango. Now, by default, every academic search engine displays what we call the basic search features. Every academic search engine displays by default what we call the basic search engine. With the basic search engine, you can enter any bibliographic item you know. That is, in case you are looking for a book and you know the title of the book, you can enter the title of the book in the basic search engine. If you know the author's name, you can enter the author's name. Anything you know about the book, if you know some keywords in the book, you can enter the keywords. But if you want specific results, and if you want to be able to manipulate your results, that is, you want to get more results or less results, you want to get documents or materials which has specific year range, you want to get materials which are written in specific languages, you want to get materials from specific journals, then it is advisable to use the advanced search feature. Now, every database has the advanced search feature button somewhere. So it is your responsibility to be able to look at the interface well and try your best to locate the advanced search feature button. So with JSTOR, the advanced search feature button is located on top of
Halo Sa. Halo Sa. Halo Sa. Oh, can you hear me? No please. No say. Okay. I was asking no, if you are I was asking if you are okay up to this point. Sir, I'm okay, but I'm trying to access it from my laptop. It's not working. So I'll send a video, then you go through, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. okay. But the theoretical explanation, are you okay with it? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. When we use the advanced search feature, when we use the basic search feature, the difference between the end operator, the or operator. Yes, sir. Are you okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. So we ask you theoretically in your exams, you should be able to answer. Yes, okay, sir. sir. Okay, so let's continue. Is he talking at all? Hello, sir. Sorry, my 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 hand clicked on the my hands clicked on my microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, we, Hello, yes, sir. we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, you. Can you hear me now? No, sir. Yes. yes, yes, we can hear. We can hear. Yes, we can. So I can't hear. So I would say that if you can hear, so how did you hear that he was asking if you can hear? <laughs> so I was saying that the advanced search feature. Sir, please, I can't see your screen. Okay, I'll send a recorded video, okay? Okay. So the advanced search feature for JSTOR by default has two search boxes. But the topic I generated was more than two. So therefore, there is a need for me to bring in more search boxes. But let's try to understand the search interface. Now, we can see two search boxes. The second one has an operator there. We can see a button called add a search box. We can see select an access type. We can oh, see submit your screen advanced. Is not moving. My screen is moving. My screen is moving. Can you see it's moving? No, it's at only one place. Are you sure? It's yes, moving. Yes, I saw the words like coaches and ideas. It's moving yeah, at please. my side. Please. Oh, okay. So we have different features on the advanced search interface of JSTOR. So we have something like narrow results where you can select the type of material you want to retrieve. If you want to retrieve only articles, you click on articles. If you want to retrieve only books, you click on books. So whatever you want to retrieve, you click on it. Now, in case you want your result to be in specific language, you click on the language feature. 
Once you click on it, you select the language in which you want your results to be in. You can decide to specify the range, the year range, in which you want your articles to be in. So once you get this video, kindly play it around the interface and see how the results appear. Now, my topic was divided into keywords. The keywords were more than two. So I need to introduce more such boxes. So Hello, sir. with that, yes, please. L let's see the keywords. Let's see what? The keywords. I think there's a pop-up, but it have disappeared from my screen. Let's see which keywords, please. When you enter, there was a keyword that will pop up. I've not entered keywords yet. I am now coming to enter my keywords. So please, which keywords are you talking about? But I have seen some things where they have. Okay, let's continue. Okay. So I'll see. I generated a topic or I'm writing on a topic. The effect of abuse among teenagers in Kaswa. So I broke my topic into keywords. And the keywords were more than four, were more than two. But JSTO is giving me by default two set boxes now one set box is supposed to contain one keyword so once my keywords are more than two there's a need to introduce new key uh, new search boxes so you click on add a search box you can decide to click so you get the number of search boxes you need. Now, each search box should contain one keyword. So let's say effect, E, F, F. -T -T. Hello, sir. Hello, yes, sir. Yes, please. So now the yes, keywords please. are the operators that you were seeing or what? Keywords are generated from your topic you are writing on. Okay. The operators are used to manipulate your results. Okay, so if continue. you want all results, you use all. If you want less results, you use and, A-N-D. By default, every search engine is set to and operator. So what can you see, please? Currently, what can you see? Nothing, just the name of the participant, that's all. Finally, click on your screen or try to refresh your page. You know how to refresh uh, a page, uh, a web page, right? I can see you know, ad search. No. Okay, oh, don't worry. Okay. I'll send you the video. Okay. So you enter your yes, keywords into your search boxes. Each search box should contain one keyword. So my first set box contains effects. My second set box contains drug abuse. My third set box contains youth. My fourth set box contains prom prom. Now, in case you have two words and you want to use them as one word or a phrase, you put them in parentheses. So drug abuse, I don't want to separate them. I want them to be one. 
So I put them in parentheses. Are we okay? Yes, sir. So by default, I am allowing the system to use and Boolean operator. Now, I know I won't get any results, but let's see what happens. I click on my submit advanced search button and I wait patiently for the system to search the database and see whether an article is written. And the person uh, is the letter uh, online? I'm here. We are conducting a search. We are waiting for the results. Okay. Is there any question? You want to ask a question? At first, I can't hear you. That's why I ask. But I can see a hand up. OK. Who wants to ask a question, please? Uh, sir, please, I want to ask a question. Okay, so in I'm case listening. In case the keywords are more than three, four, five, how do you go about it? I just said you introduce a new search box. Oh, okay. In my explanation, I told you that JSTOR gives us by default two search boxes. When you use Emerald, Emerald will give you one search box by default but there is a button on the interface which when you click it will give you more search boxes do you get me hello sir yes please hello sir i'm listening in case of effective uh, research JSTOR and the uh, Emeralds, which one is effective to use? It's not about effectiveness. It's about which discipline are you in? When you go to, let's see something. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Emerald contains information for business administration, management, information technology. When we go to JSTOR, JSTOR contains information for economic students, history and political science students. So depending on your field, you choose yeah. one database. All the databases are effective. You get me. I'm getting you, but uh, the, uh, per what you have mentioned, hello, sir. Are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. Now, per what are, you are mentioned, I'm at, uh, offering faculty of art of social sciences. So where will I do my first? So faculty of research? art of social sciences. So what are you doing? Are you doing psychology? Are you doing political science? Are you doing social work? Are you doing sociology? What are you doing? Social you work me? and uh, psychology. So social work and psychology. So with social work and psychology, you can go in for a multidisciplinary database, something like Taylor and Francis. So with Taylor and Francis, you can find anything and everything inside. All the disciplines are there. You can go for schools. With schools, everything is there, whether business administration, whether faculty of arts, all the disciplines are there. The second get... one is what? Hello? Which second one? Which second one? You, you said I can go to Taylor and Francis and 
Miss Terry. Sa. Miss Terry. Sa. I have showed you where the names and the subject areas and the links of the databases are. I am showing you how to access it. I can't okay. show you everything. So it is up to you to explore. You get me? Okay, sir. So like humanities and social sciences, you can use project meals. So when you come to where the names and the subject areas and the websites of the links are, you look at the subject area. So if you are in psychology, psychology falls under social sciences. So then you can use project mutes. If you don't like project mutes, you can use Taylor and Francis because it's, it is a multidisciplinary database, which means it contains all the disciplines. If you find yourself in the sciences, let's say uh, physician assistant, let's say medicine, let's say pharmacy, those guys use Hinari. This is Hinari. Hinari is for those who are offering the science courses. So wherever you find yourself, there is a database that suits you. And there are general databases where, irrespective of the course you are offering, you can still find data or articles over there. So I can't tell you everything. I can show you the way, but I can't show you all the things. So when you come to this page, you just have to scroll down Look at the names of the databases and the subject areas. So where you fall in, then you click on the link, then you apply. What I just want you to know is that each of the databases have different interfaces and have different features. So you might find the language feature in JSTOR but you won't see it in Project Muse, or you won't see it in uh, Taylor and Francis. I am using JSTOR because it contains majority of the search interfaces I want you to know. That is the language, the, the, the publication year, the type of documents you want, how to manipulate the Boolean operators, that is why I'm using JSTOR. But depending on the course you are offering, you select the discipline. Please, are we okay? Where were others stood by my side? Is anybody having a question? Beatrice, are you okay? Clementina, are you okay? Sir, please, I'm okay. Okay. So, we were trying to look for an article which contains effects, drug abuse, youth, from, from. These are keywords that were taken out from a research topic to which I am writing. My research topic was the effect of teen, the effect of drug abuse among teenage among the youth in Pram Pram. So out of this research topic, I generated keywords from it, and I entered each keyword in one search box. By default, JSTOR gives me two search boxes. But because my keywords are more than two, I have to introduce a new or more search boxes. You can introduce new or more search boxes by looking for the button. The button is located on the page somewhere. 
So you have to get time and look at the interface well to locate the button. Now, after I entered my keyword, I allowed the system to use the end Boolean operator. But I was sure that I won't get any article retrieved. I was sure of that because I am using the end Boolean operator. And the end Boolean operator states that all my keywords are supposed to be present in the document. Sure, so. to be retrieved. Come again. Um, are you saying end like E N D? A N D. We have been saying this in the class. A N D. Or how do we pronounce it? No, I'm not a Ghanaian, so like it was quite confusing. I thought there were two and an end, so. Uh. Oh, but my dear, when we were starting or in class. Last week and this week, I've been using your the operators I'm talking about. I always spell it out for you. A N D R N. Hello, hello, sir. N. Say. It should be end bullet operator, not end bullet operator. End means to end. <laughs> At first, me too, I was confused about the pronunciation. So, if the pronunciation is not even pronounced well, we have said it, or it is in your slide. Have you seen the slide? Have you read the yes, slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, did you see E or A N D? A N D. So, why would I be using E N D if in the slides it is A N D? And if At first, we couldn't three, receive three, the strike three, early before you met it the last time. So I just wrote end. But per the strike before I realized that it's what end. Bullet of it. <laughs> My understanding, please. I, sh I don't mean to convince any person. So. I didn't receive any results because the end Boolean operator <laughs> made, made sure that all the uh, keywords are supposed to be present in the article. Now, nobody has written articles which contain all the keywords I entered into the search box. So I didn't get any results. When that happens, you have to be smart enough, know where the problem is, then go back and make changes or manipulate your search by changing your operators. So I go back to where I inputted my keywords. Then in between where I entered the youth from from, I changed the operator over there to an all operator. Then I see if I can get a result. So I changed this operator to an all operator. Then I click on my search and see if I can get a result. So I wait patiently as the search engine tries to locate documents which contains either one of the keywords or all the keywords, then it tries to retrieve it for me.
Any question up to this point? So depending on your location and the speed of your network, your results might appear faster or slower. So when I change the operator between the youth from from to an all operator the system was able to retrieve 11,746 results 11,746 results so if you still think the results are more you can still go back and play with the other features like the publication date. Try to give a specific year range, maybe from 2020 to 2023, and see the number of results to retrieve. You can decide to go and play with the language. Select any language and see whether it can retrieve an article which has been written in that specific language. Try your possible best to practice and play with it. So now, if the articles are retrieved, and let's say you want to read offline, you can easily download that article because it has been subscribed to by Central University. So when you scroll, you need to see a download button, which is beside the article or book. So you just have to click the, the download button. Beside the specific article you want to download and later. So like where my mouse is currently, the written drug abuse and learning effects. So if I want to read further on this article, I just click on download button. Then the system will ask me, am I sure I want to download the article? Once I see that command, click on Accept and Download. Once you accept, it will download the article onto your machine for you. Once you accept, it will download the article onto your machine for you. Once you accept, it will download the article onto your machine for you to use. So basically, this is how you can get access to the databases that are subscribed by Central University. You just sign and visit the databases and try to print around it and see and say up to this point uh, uh really your hands is up There's
Chelsea, are you okay? Chelsea, are you okay? Daniela, are you okay? Yes, sir. Jennifer, are you okay? Janet, are you okay? Francesca, are you okay? Hello, sir. Yes, please. I think about uh, five minutes now, I couldn't hear you, so I cut off my line to region. You couldn't hear which part? Hello? Which part didn't you hear? Well, we have, if you are not uh, okay with the results, the results are many. So we have uh, 11,700 uh, and something results. So you can tell your operator to after that part, I, I miss up the price. Yes, so I was saying that there are so many set features. There are so many advanced set features, like the language, like the publication year, and the rest. So in case you still want to narrow your search, then you can go back and play with the filters over there. So you can go and select mm -hmm. any language and try to see whether you retrieve an article in that language. You can go and select some specific publication year, let's say 2020 to 2022, and see whether you are going to retrieve an article you can come to where the written narrow results and select maybe books and see whether the topic you are writing on, are you going to get some books which were which has been written? So you just play with it and see the results you are going to get. So at the end of the day, when you get to level 400 and you are writing your project work, you will know your way out. Now, the last thing I'll be talking about is the ebooks. The last thing I'll be talking about is the ebooks. There is something called Mendeley. Mendeley is used for referencing and citation. If after talking about the ebooks, I still have more energy, I'll introduce the Mendeley. Then I send this recorded video to you. Then the recorded videos on citation and referencing and mentally, which I've sent to my CBS students and my pharmacy students. I'll send you the link when you get time. You watch it to teach you how to use mentally for citation referencing. Those who have watched it are happy about it and they are using it for their assignment. Okay, so how do we get access to the ebooks? So when you come to the e services page, you will see ebooks, ebook services. Then you click on it. The ebook services gives you the opportunity to read electronic books, which has been subscribed to by Central University online or you can download it and read it offline or you can download some chapters and read them so when you click on the e service this page opens up for you once this page opens up for you in case you have already registered for a username and a password you just enter your username and your password and click on sign in. But if you've not registered, then kindly click on request account. When you click on request account, 
this page pops up for you. Then you gently fill it out, accept the agreement, and click on request account. Once you request an account, I will see it. Sir, please, I can't see anything. You can't see or you can't hear. I can't see. So please, what can you see? Please, what can you see? Hello? It's black. It's black. If you are, can you see my screen? Beatrice, can you see my screen? Augustina, can you see my screen? Chelsea, can you see my screen? Chelsea, you say? Hello, sir. You can see the screen. Sir, please, I can't see your screen. So what can you see? I can't see anything. I'm just seeing the names. I told you, I was the one who told you earlier. And you said uh, I should be something to say right now. Is the name something to play right now? Hey, Pia, can you see my screen? No, please, sir. I still can't see. You can't see your name. I can't see the I'm screen. Just, I'm, I'm, displaying, I'm just seeing the name. Yes, I'm displaying the name. Okay. That is my screen. So what can you see now, Ikea? I'm still seeing the names. I'm still seeing Tracy, Daniela, Chelsea. Chelsea. Chelsea, what can you see now? Chelsea. I think the ebook part. Chelsea. Janet, what can you see? Janet, what can you see? Patience, what can you see? I can see the ebook service. So you can the see page. my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. Esther, what can you see? So I can't see anything, only the names. Faith, what can you see? Saving me, I can't see anything. It's just your name. What network are you using? MTN, sir. Your signal is strong at where you are. Yes, please. I'm even on a Wi Fi. The school Wi Fi? No. Are you are sure the network is strong? The Wi Fi, you are using? Yeah, the, the school Wi Fi. Yeah, the network is very, very, very strong. Daniela, can you see my screen? Yes, uh, I can see it now. So, when you request for an account, I still can't see it. 
I'll share the <laughs> so you enter your username and your password. Yes, sir. Once you enter your username and your password, the page opens up for you. By default, you are going to see the basic search engine. Then you are going to see other search criteria like advanced search, browse, subject. You can decide to use any of the search strategies over there. Now, you can decide to go by using the advanced search. So when you click on it, this is the page you are going to see. If you decide not to use advanced search, you can browse through the subject. If you decide not to use an advanced search, you can browse through the subject. When you click on browse subject, all the subjects to which books has been subscribed to pops up for you. In case you are doing psychology, you scroll down to where they've written health and medicine. Then you click on psychology. In case you are doing philosophy, you scroll to where they've written religion and philosophy. You see philosophy there. In case you are doing economics, you go to where they've written business. You see economics there. So whatever course you are doing, you try your possible best to locate your subject over there. So because of the practical purpose, let's do psychology. I click on psychology. Now all books that have been subscribed for psychology appears. So in case you know the book, you are searching for, or you know the author's name, you just type it in the search box on top. You don't need to browse through subjects, just type the bibliographic feature you know. But in case you don't have any bibliographic feature in mind and you just want to read, then you can select any subject you want to read and follow. Now, you can download and have the chapters of the book to yourself. But you cannot download the whole book and have it to yourself. Now, how do we read a book online over here? So when you look on your right hand side, you can see some buttons which are closer to the topic or the title of the book. The first one means that you can download the whole book. The second one means that you can read online. So imagine you want to read online. You click on the second button. Once you click on it, the page opens up for you so that you can read online. In case you don't want to scroll through and you know the specific chapter you want to read, you go to your left-hand side. Then you browse through the table of contents and select the specific chapter you want to read. So let's say I want to read part two, which has the title, Hailing Through relation. I click on it. Once I click on it, it appears for me. Now, I can decide to read it online or download that chapter and read it offline. How do we do that? I go to the top. I see some buttons at the top. 
The first one means that you want to download the whole book. The second one means that you want to download the specific chapter. So in case you want to download the specific chapter, you click on the second button. Once you click on it, it tells you or asks you if you want to choose a specific citation style. So we have APA, we have Chicago, we have Harvard, we have MLA. So the citation style you want to choose, you choose. So by default, APA is selected. Then you click on continue. Once you click on continue, it generates the PDF. You click on open PDF. Now, once you do that, it will download the book onto your laptop or the device you are using for you. Now, let's imagine I want to download the entire book. I click on the download button. Once I click on it, it asks me some set of questions. The first question it is asking is, which device am I using? Am I using a laptop or a desktop? Am I using an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod? Am I using an Android phone or an Android tablet? So I select the device I'm using. Then it asks me, am I using my own computer or a public computer? I select that one too. Then I click on continue. The next question to ask me is, do I have or will I need an Adobe Digital Edition? Now, this is a reader that reads the book. Without this reader, the book you would download, you won't be able to read it. No PDF can read the book. Now, they operate the system as if it is a physical library. That is, a physical library won't borrow you the book and let you have the book to yourself till you die. You have to read the book for some specific number of days and return the book to the physical library. Likewise, the ebook system does the same thing. But this time, it will take away the book from you when your time expires. So, it gives you the opportunity to select the number of days you want to read the book for. And you can only read the book using the Adobe Digital Edition Reader. In case you don't have it installed on your phone or your laptop, then, when you get to this stage, you click on Get Adobe Digital Edition. When you click on it, it takes you to this website. That is the Adobe Digital Edition website. If you are using a Macintosh machine, that is a Mac laptop, you click on the first link. If you are using a Windows laptop, you click on the second link. If it's an Android phone, you click on this one. If it's, it's, it's an iPhone, you click on this. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm using yes, sir. a Windows laptop. So I click on Windows. Please, we can hear you. Once I click on Windows, my system tries to download the software for me. So then you download the software. Once you download it, you locate the software on your computer.
once you locate the software on your computer, you try to install the software onto your computer by double clicking the installer or the software you have downloaded. When you double click it, it will ask you a question. Are you sure you want to install this software? Then you say yes. Once you click on yes, this page or this mini box pops up. You click on the agreement. You click on next. Click on next. Leave it till you see completed close. So you wait a while. So you see completed close. So as you see completed at the top, and you see close button, then you click on the close button. Once you do that, the Adobe Digital Edition Reader will try to open for you to see. Now, last week in your class, I downloaded that book called Labor, Mobility, and Rural Society. I used, I selected one day. So the book has expired. So they have taken it away from me. So you can see what they are telling me. I'm able to open Labor, Mobility, and Rural Society because this book is expired and cannot be opened, removed from library. So, if you have you haven't downloaded any book, the Adobe Digital Edition Reader will open for you. Once it opens, you go back to your browser. Then you tell the system, I am done with this step. Then the third question says, download. So it will ask you the number of days you want to read the book. You select the number of days you want to read the book. Do you want to read it for a day, for seven days, for 14 days, for 21 days, you select. So let's say I want to read it for a day. Then it asks you the format in which you want the book to be in. Do you want it to be in EPUB or PDF? Then you select the format. Then you click on download your book. Then as, as you can see down there, the book has been downloaded. I locate it on my computer. This is my book. So as you can see, the extension of the file I have downloaded is ACSM, meaning that Adobe Content Server Message. So it's not a PDF file. Therefore, no PDF reader will be able to read this book apart from the Adobe Content Server Message. So then, after you have installed the Adobe Digital Edition Reader onto your laptop or your device, you've downloaded the file, then you double click the file you have downloaded. Once you double click, the Adobe Digital Edition Reader will try to open the book for you to read offline. Please. Do we have any questions? Hello, sir. Yes, please. It's 9-3 on my phone, please. It's what? 9-3. Yes, so we are ending. OK. Any question? Sir. Yes, please. 
um, please, after downloading the book, you still read online. No, you are not reading online. You are reading offline. After downloading and the reader reading the book for you, you are reading offline. You turn off your data and you read. So, sir, so when you open the link for downloading, you can see that we have saved on download on that page. So when you click on save, what will, will that book will be? Will you it save for you to read all? No, it will be saved in your library. This is your account. So when you click on save, it will be sent to your account like a room. So the room contains a lot of books. So you want to put this book on your table. So when you click on save, it will be placed on your table but it won't come offline onto your machine. It is in the account online. You get it? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, there. Any questions? I'm listening. The Hello, Adobe app. The Adobe app, what version does it take? What version so does it take? Yeah, I was trying to Proper. download it. It said it, uh, it needs an older version. The Adobe Digital Edition. Yes, it said it needs an older version. It's an older version, so you can't download it. How how were you downloading it? Did you just go to Google and say download Adobe Digital Edition? No, I went to uh, I went according to the list. I went to Play Store. Are you using your phone? Yes. Which this thing? Uh, how do you call it? Which you are using what iPhone or what? Um, are not an iPhone. What Android? Yes. Okay, so you say you went to Play Store, right? Yes. Okay, I'm trying to go to Play Store. That's Google Play Store, right? Yes. So this is what you saw? Please, yes. They even they installed it in Lincoln. That is your phone. Can you hear me? It didn't come on your phone. Right? Yes, yeah, so this app isn't available right, because it was made for uh -huh. wait, 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 wait. Let me explain to you. Now, what phone are you using? Is this some talk? Red. Come again. Eleven. Come again. I can't hear you. Please, red me in the same floor. Red me in the same floor. Oh, yeah. The Android version. Do you know the Android version? Do you know the Android version? Thirteen point. It's what? It's thirteen point three. The Android version is thirteen point three. Yes. The Android version of your phone. <laughs> Are you sure we are at Android 10? Yes. My mission is um, MIUI Global 13.3.0.3. 12SP18. 13.4. 13.4.
And maybe the things are not there. Yes. How come? Yes. Because when you see that this app is available, uh, or this app is not available, it is two things. It's either your Android version on the phone is low. Because when we are the first thing is you actually select the, the platform or the Android version at which you want your app to operate on. Do you get me? Please, yes. So if you tell the system that operate on Android version 10 upwards, so if somebody's phone is Android version 4, the app cannot operate on it. So the person will see this app is not available for your device. So as you can see, by the written, this app is available for some of your devices. Like three or four, which are all connected to one. So the email identifies all my devices, but the system is telling me that for some of my devices, I can install Adobe Digital Edition. For some of them, I cannot install. Do you get me? Yes. I say that kindly get a laptop. Okay. okay. You're welcome. Any questions? Thank again? you. Any question again? That's what we'll be on campus. Hello, sir. Yes, tomorrow I'll be on campus. Okay. So I'm about to end the class. Immediately I end the class, I'll push the recording. Then I'll make it up. Any questions? So, in the absence of no questions, I stop the recording.